Hi, I'm Denson Paul Pollard, and I'm recording this video in response to email questions that I've received about warm-up. Warm-up may be the most important time of your daily routine. It's the time in your playing when you should really focus on your fundamentals. And let's be clear, fundamentals are really the key to being successful as a trombone player. I'm going to demonstrate some specific exercises in a routine that I do for my warm-up. You may not agree with these specific exercises, but make sure that you cover all of the fundamentals and the basics of your playing every day in your warm-up. I try to do my warm-up early every day. When my mind is clear and I don't have other things competing for my thoughts, I can really focus on my playing. I try to make sure that everything I do in the warm-up is slow, with lots of air, super relaxed, and I use a metronome and a tuner during my warm-up every day. I think that's very important. So, what I thought I would do is just take you through my daily routine. The first thing I do every day, actually before I ever get to the instrument, is I breathe and stretch. When I was young, I was in a real hurry to get to the instrument every day, and I did, didn't really value breathing and stretching. But as I get older, I realized it's very important for getting the body ready to uh, suck and blow air, which is very important for playing the trombone well. So one of the first things I do every day is an in for four, out for four exercise, just to demonstrate. I like to feel the air, so I put my hand up. Expand. Stop and stretch around your lungs. And then let it out. Now breathing and stretching can get much more extensive than that, and maybe it should. But make sure you do something every day to get your body ready to breathe. The next thing I do every day is I grab my mouthpiece. I think the mouthpiece is really the instrument. The trombone itself is just an amplifier for what you do here. So you've got to be able to buzz well on the mouthpiece. I think a good buzz on the mouthpiece is a buzz that's kind of airy, which insinuates lots of air passing through your buzzing lips. And I think good pitch is important uh, on the mouthpiece. If you're buzzing with good pitch, it means that the mouthpiece and the horn are working together. They're not fighting each other. So I'll usually buzz a little bit, and I'll begin with uh, just single pitches. I'll try to remember a B-flat. B-flat. <laughs> Lots of air and slow. <laughs> if I'm not happy with the sound, if it doesn't feel comfortable, I'll grab this little device that I use quite frequent. It's called the Inspirix Spirometer. I turn it upside down and buzz into it, and the ball, whether or not the ball rises to the top is an indication of whether or not you're using a lot of air. So I'll put my mouthpiece on the end of that and buzz. I'm gonna make sure the ball rises straight to the top. So I'll buzz a few pitches there. I may buzz an easy tune like a Bordoni. Just a few minutes of gentle buzzing to make sure the tissue of the lips are ready to buzz and that the, the connection between the, your brain and your lips is, is firm. So breathing, stretching, then buzzing, then I go to the instrument. One of the first things, the first thing I do every morning on the trombone is a series of long tone exercises. I'm a big fan of long tones. I think long tones are an opportunity for us to concentrate on the basics of sound production, intonation, breathing, articulation. All of those things can be concentrated on with these simple long tone exercises. And I'm also a person that plays long tones on every partial of my instrument every day, including the trigger partials. I do them slowly, 
very relaxed with lots of air, and I use a metronome and a tuner as I'm doing these. I usually put my metronome on 60. I've got my tuner on the stand. Let's do a low B flat. I wasn't rushed, making sure that I took a nice big breath. I was also making sure I put lots of air back out through the instrument. At any time during these long tone exercises that I do, if I'm not happy with my sound or some aspect of the exercise, I will stop and buzz it. Let's move to middle F. Make sure I come right in on the correct pitch, not above it or below it, all the way down the slide. So I do the mid register long tones first, then I move to the low register. Let's go to trigger F. the tuner. If I'm flat or sharp, I will stop and adjust my slide and try to find the sweet spot on the slide for each one of those notes. Let's uh, I even do the double trigger notes with these long tones. So let's do tr double trigger D. with that, so I'll stop and buzz. Mm, try to hear the note. Stop, sing it, buzz it, then go back to the horn. much better after singing and buzzing. It works most of the time. So uh, all the way down into the pedal register, let's do a pedal B flat, slow breath. I can even stop and buzz that. different ranges of my instrument, I really focus on air speed and air direction. And as I'm playing down into the pedal register, I really focus on blowing the air directly into the back of the mouthpiece. I think that's very important and slowing down the air. the way 
down the slide. I'll even go down to pedal F. Double trigger pedals. Do double trigger pedal D. And although it's an extreme, I'll even try to buzz down there. Slowing down the vibration of the lips, blowing slow air and buzzing directly into the back of the mouthpiece. So, we did long tones in the middle register. I skipped some for this video, but normally I would do every partial. I did long tones for the low register, then I moved to the high register for the long tones. And again, uh, speaking about the air, as I move into the high register, I really focus on blowing the air down as I play higher. So let's go to uh, the F above middle C. You should notice that my breathing for the high register is really not different from my breathing for the low register. It's still slow, it's still relaxed. Very important for the high register. Let's do the high G partial as a long tone. The high G is a tricky note for a lot of people. I found that focusing on that a little bit with long tone exercises in the morning really helps you be confident on that note. So this is a high G. Make sure it's nice and high. That part, high G needs to be sharp second position. Comfortable? Stop and buzz. La. Ooh. 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 Make sure you buzz right on the pitch, not above it or below it. tenor trombone players are a little bit unsure about bolero B flat. I found that a little focus on that partial with long tones in the morning really helps you be confident on that note. So, not comfortable? Stop and buzz. more comfortable after stopping and buzzing. Do that all the way down the slide. Lots of air, nice and relaxed. All the way up through the partials to the high F even. Again, the breathing for those high notes should really not be that different from the breathing for the low notes. Slow and relaxed. Low F. High F. So, 
long tone exercises in the morning on every partial helps you to be more confident in the different ranges of your instrument. Now, the next thing I do after long tones are slow slurs. Again, in every range of the instrument. I tend to do middle, low, and then high. Let's do some easy three note slurs in the middle register. Again, with my metronome and my tuner. B flat F, B flat F, B flat. The slur's not smooth. If you're not comfortable with your sound, stop and buzz. Even grab your Inspirix spirometer if you have one. Make sure the ball rises right to the top. Back to the horn. Not too loud. Minimize the movement in your face when you're doing these three note slurs. And also adjust for the partials. Make sure that you have a really clear idea of where the overtone series is on your slide. If you notice as I was doing that slur, I adjusted down for the middle F, down for the middle E. Have a very clear idea about that. Uh, for your amateur, make sure when you're doing these slurs and you're doing your long tones, make sure that your corners are firm, your chin is flat. The muscles, uh, for the most part, need to be pulling downward. Nothing back or nothing up. No smile amateurs as you're doing this. Uh, so uh, I do that easy three note slur right down the slide all the way to seventh position. When I get to seventh position, I'll reverse it and come back up. When you're in the outer positions doing these slurs, remember your horn is very long at that time. Your slide is out very far and you need to blow even more air to fill up this long horn. So easy three note slurs in the mid register. Uh, I will go to the low register. As a bass trombone player, I try to uh, do arpeggiated slow slurs that uh, move through the trigger range into the pedal range. So I'm going to do uh, uh, B flat F, B flat F, D, pedal B flat, pedal B flat, pedal F, and then back up through the register. I'm going to do that all the way down my slide. Especially bass drum roll players, if the sound is not even and smooth, stop and buzz. Arpeggiated, slow arpeggiated slurs in the low registers is a good time to explore uh, your second valve only 
And after I, when I get to G flat, I will come back to flat second position and do my G flat uh, key in the inner positions, uh, watching my tuner, experimenting with using the second valve only. So this is G flat. And again, if you're not comfortable, stop and buzz. F. touch on the low B, B, B natural there. So slow, low register slurs that get you through the valve register into the pedals. Now, the only way to play well on the low register is to use lots of air. And so that's why I do the low register right before I go to the high register, because the key to playing in the high register is using lots of air as well. So you get into the habit of using lots of air on the low slurs, and then you move to the high register. I like to begin my slow slur exercise in the high register on B major, because B major is an important key for bass trombone. So uh, let's do B major, adjusting for the slide positions. If you're not comfortable, la. after buzzing. Then moving to B flat major and moving down the slide slowly. My mid, low, and then high with slow slurs. I will do sweeping arpeggios that get me that connect all of my registers. So I'm going to begin on a uh, an F major arpeggio that on the pedal F, go down to pedal C and back up to the high A and back down. Slowly, just thinking about sound and intonation. as I'm moving through these sweeping arpeggiated slurs, E major. And then E flat major. Now for E flat major, I'm going to go down to the super pedal B flat, which is played, it's a false note, so you play it in uh, second position, up to the super high B flat above bolero. Really thinking about air direction and air speed. Slow down the air when you're in the pedal register, speed it up when you go to the high register, blow directly into the back of the mouthpiece for the pedal register, blow down in the high register. Stop and buzz even in the extreme pedal. So, sweeping 
arpeggiated slurs that connect your registers. Very important. After I do my slow slurs, I do some flexibilities to get the tissue of my lips ready to move fast. And uh, there are lots of flexibility ex exercises. A common one is... You can vary the speed on that, but just get your the tissue of your lips ready to move fast. Slur fast. Now, as a bass drum player, uh, I like to do that flexibility exercise in the different registers of my instrument. Moving uh, through my valves. Moving from pedal to mid to high. Um, so uh, I also like to do arpeggiated, really fast arpeggiated slurs moving uh, me through uh, the valves quickly just to get my hand ready to move through the valves uh, fluidly. So, flexibilities to get the different registers of your instrument ready to move fast. So, we did long tones, we did slow slurs, we did flexibilities. Now, I also like to get my tongue involved in the warm-up uh, and do some something that warms up my articulations. And there are lots of things you could do for this. You could do an exercise of the coprosh uh, in different clefts, uh, or you could do something as simple as scales. And uh, oftentimes I will, do, I will do my major scales, staccato on the way up and legato on the way down, making sure that the two articulations are very separate. Oftentimes uh, they can start to sound kind of alike. You want to make sure that they're very separate. And I'll start in the pedal register and move up in half steps with these major scales, focusing on articulations. For the low register, with my tongue, I like to make sure that the tongue is finding the right place. For the pedal register, I'm actually letting my tongue get really far forward, even hitting my lips for the extreme. My tongue is hitting way out there. And for the high register, my tongue is sitting way back there. So scales, some, your articulation exercises in the morning should help your tongue. You should do them so that your tongue can figure out where it needs to hit inside of your mouth for the different registers of the instrument. tongue find its place inside of your mouth. I will usually do some multiple tongue exercises, triple tongue and double tongue exercises in the morning. Uh, and again, you can use your major scale, do a series of tri triple, uh, triple tongue uh, rhythms or double tongue rhythms moving up the, the scale. <laughs> You might need to use uh, multiple tongue exercises.
doing exercises during the day. And I, I will usually end my, the articulation uh, part of my warm up with a, a chromatic scale. <laughs> moving through all register the registers of the instrument. Now another part of the warm-up that I think is really neg neglected by trombone players is uh, uh, touching dynamics in the warm-up, especially the soft dynamics. Soft working, uh, developing a good consistent soft register is very important as a trombone player. Most trombone players play loud pretty well. That's what, that's what we like to do as trombone players, but the soft register is is where you can fail or succeed as a trombone player. And uh, I'll usually do some kind of uh, crescendo, decrescendo exercise in the morning just to touch on the different dynamic registers of my instrument. So let's do, for instance, let's do a middle F, and I'm going to start as soft as I can and crescendo to as loud as I can, back down, trying to make sure I control the sound, and uh, yeah. Very soft. Try to hover right around where the sound goes away and right where it starts a little bit, just to, to work on being able to start a note uh, and having sensitive uh, lips to be able to start a note at a really soft dynamic. I really feel that if you're buzzing the right pitch inside the mouthpiece and your slide is in the right place, you stand a much better chance of playing well in the soft register. I'll, uh, I might do a Bordoni as soft as I can in the morning just to get that going. Play it right on the fence between the note not speaking and the note just barely being there. So that's uh, pretty much what I do in my, my warm up. Right after my warm up, I, I will usually do a Bordoni uh, or Rochu in different clefs. And I have a video for that as well. You can consult my video database for uh, a Bordoni in different, different registers. And I'll usually do a Koprosh or a Gregoriev uh, during that session of my day. Uh, as I said in the beginning, I usually do this early in the morning. This is my first session. And it usually lasts an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And uh, especially when I was a student, I had a session in the afternoon where I would do excerpts and an ex a session at night where I would work on solos. So that is my warm-up and my daily routine.